everybody and happy Tuesday afternoon. Welcome to the Redesign with Prima group. Um, my name is Cece from CC Restyled and I am a furniture artist in the Midwest in Indianapolis actually and I am a um, I'm a member of the Redesign with Prima design team and today we're going to be working on this little nightstand here. It's just a little three drawer end table slash nightstand whatever you want to use it for. And um, we're going to pack as many Redesign with Prima products onto this little guy as we can. So today um, I have got it already painted. I painted it in a base coat and then I blended the second coat in a couple different colors here. I've got this palmetto, which is this nice almost emerald green, not kind of emerald green, kind of with a little bit of teal undertones. And then... Um, this pretty tea rose color. I really like the combination of the pale pink and the t um, and the the green. It's a really pretty combination to me. Um, and then the middle drawer I stained with a water-based gel stain um, from Dixie Bell. It's called Tobacco Road. And then the bottom drawer is a blend of two different Dixie Bell colors: Vintage Duck Egg and Yankee Blue to create some interest on the edges and corners. Um, we are going to start, we're going to, we're going to do different treatments to each of these drawers. So, um, starting with, let's go ahead and start with the middle drawer because we're going to be doing some stenciling. So I want it to be able to, to dry. Um, like I said, I went ahead and I gel stained it with a water-based gel stain. So it's plenty dry. Um, and we're going to go ahead and pop this sucker out. I'm going to be using um, a large stencil from Redesign with Prima. It's one of my favorite stencils. It's called Imperial Damask. Isn't that pretty? I use it on lots of things. They're nice, big, large size so that you can use them on sides of drawers or I'm sorry, sides of dressers, drawer fronts, walls, um, canvases, any kind of home decor. They're a nice big size and they're nice and thick too. So I really love these stencils. Um, the way that I get a nice clean sharp line on my stenciling is a couple different things. I use a uh, stencil adhesive in order to get my stencil to stay put. It also kind of creates a seal between the stencil and the, um, the surface that you're stenciling and that helps a lot with that bleed un under the stencil to help prevent that. So I'm not using any special kind of spray adhesive. I'm just using, um, it's just the Alleen's ta Tacky Spray, Fast Grab Tacky Spray. I, I usually use Elmer's but I'm out of that so this is what I have. I'm going to give the back of my stencil a quick spray or a mist with my um, adhesive. And then I'm going to let that dry for just a couple minutes. To, um, I want it to dry to attack. I don't want to put it on my um, surface too wet. It'll leave some residue and I don't really want that. I want it to be just dry enough to stick to my surface without leaving um, yuckies behind. So <clears throat> um, I sprayed that. I'm going to let that dry for just a couple minutes. And um, I am going to be using liquid gold leaf with my... Um, stencil and I like to use a foam roller when I stencil it again it helps with um, that seepage underneath of the paint um, that along with the um, uh, spray adhesive help tremendously I, I knock on wood for the most part I get nice clean clean crisp stenciling so um, that's what I'm going to keep doing but I'm going to show you the foam roller that I'm using because I'm especially fond of it it is um, a roller brush from Redesigned with Prima. It's got this extra long handle. It's about, I don't know, four inches, five inches. So it's a perfect size for stenciling small or medium sized areas. Um, and the density of the foam on these rollers is just perfect. It's, it's perfect for um, the stenciling because it's not too thick. It doesn't leave a bunch of extra, um, extra paint to like kind of squish out and, and make your stencil uh, not crisp. So it's, it's the perfect nap, if you will. 
Um, it also comes with this little acrylic plate, as you see in the photo, that you use to pour your paint on and then you use that to, to get it onto your roller brush. I'm just going to actually use a, a little roller tray. Um, I don't know where my acrylic plate went. So I'm going to use um, a little roller tray that I got from like Michael's or whatever craft store. It came with some like cheap foam brush in it. I'm just going to use that with my, my roller. So yeah, it's about, I don't know, four, four, four or five inches something like that, five inches. Um, and it comes with, I think, four different brush heads. And they clean really easily. You just kind of run it under some water and squeeze it until it runs clear. You can use soap if you want to. But anyways, that's my roller that I'm gonna be using. And I told you I'm going to, I'm going to be using Liquid Gold Leaf, which is just from the craft store as well, because I really like the, the super bright, uh, the brilliance of it. Usually when I'm doing a stencil and I want gold, I use the, um, decor wax from redesigned with prima in eternal but we're kind of running a little low on that so um we're not gonna use that on this stencil that and it's oil based so if i want to put a transfer over that i have to wait plenty of time until it's dry and i'm hoping to get a little further on this project today um and it won't dry in time so this will dry much faster so I'm going to go ahead and pour a little bit of my liquid gold leaf after I've sh shaken it up into my little roller tray. So I'll point you down here so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna pour a little bit into my roller tray. And I'm gonna grab my large stencil And I wanna place that, um, oh, I, I'm gonna try to center it somewhat. Okay, this is a sticky side. So I let my spray adhesive dry just to attack. I'm gonna, I wanna get probably this middle, middle section here. And I wanna center it, there's a little keyhole on here, so I'm going to center it as best I can, straighten it up as best I can. And I think that that is going to work. Well, no, a little bit over this way. Okay. So I've got my spray adhesive on, which just helps kind of hold this in place just a little bit, but it's not too sticky. Um, so I'm going to roll on a little bit of my liquid gold leaf, but not too much. I don't want to, I don't want excess of it. I just want to roll it on my foam roller so that I can get it on my, on my um, drawer front. And I'm going to go ahead and grab, let's see. I'm gonna grab this in my other hand in case I need to refill it, which I, I'm gonna go ahead and refill my roller tray. This stuff dries really fast, so um, you just have to be mindful of that. It's basically just like gold spray paint, but it comes in a little jar. Like I said, I got that at the craft store. So I'm loading up my roller and I'm gonna hold my stencil in place because I don't have enough glue on to, cut, to really hold it in place like on its own just enough to where it kind of, kind of sticks a little bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a direction to start rolling. And I'm rolling on my liquid gold leaf. Look how pretty and bright and brilliant that is. And I'm not applying too much pressure because I don't want it to squish underneath. So I'm just being kind of um, light to medium pressure. I'm gonna load up a little bit more of that paint on my roller here. And I'm just gonna hold this dental stencil in place while I finish out the rest. So you definitely um, wanna use some spray adhesive on the back of your stencils. And a foam roller is like super key to get a nice crisp, clean line on your stencil. Okay, so I think that will be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and ditch my roller here. And I'm gonna just kind of pull up on two ends so I don't smear my stencil as I'm pulling up. Just kind of carefully pulling it up, whoop, just like that. Okay, and then I can go wash my stencil. But I'm pretty, I'm a lazy stencil mom, so I just kind of let them <laughs> dry. So here is my pretty um, uh, redesigned with Prima large stencil in Imperial Damask. 
And isn't that so pretty? It's so sparkly. So now we're just gonna pop that right back in. Um, and we're gonna let that dry. We're gonna let that dry while we work on our other two, um, other two draws. So we've got this top pink stripey drawer, and then we've got the bottom one in um, the vintage duck egg in Yankee Blue. Hey everyone. Thank you, Lisa. That's very kind of you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I'm working on this drawer, which I've already got painted, and we're just going to use a variety of Redesign with Prima products to make it really um, one of a kind, okay? So I already painted it, and I stained with water-based stain. I stained these two, the top and this drawer, so we're going to let that dry. So for these other two drawers, I'm going to be putting some transfers on there. And I may, may, may just put a tiny bit of flower transfer on this stencil guy. I'm not sure. We're going to see how it looks once we start to kind of fill it up with flowers and such. So um, we'll, we'll kind of make that decision when we get to that point. Um, I absolutely love this stencil. It looks good on everything. Everything. And it would look very pretty in silver, too. I love some metallic stenciling. I love it. Love me some metallic stenciling. And as you might be able to see, I don't know how well you can see it on the video, but I also added some keyhole molds. So this piece already had keyholes, but they were just a little old metal kind of mission style type of keyholes. Um, so I added some uh, a keyhole on each one from Redesign with Prima. It's one of the silicone molds. It's called Grandeur grander keyholes and I love 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 this mold I actually have two of them so that I can make many keyholes at a time um, look at all those pretty keyholes there's like what nine of them nine of them I think and they're all different um, shapes and sizes for whatever kind of project you're trying to match so they are going to be gold like this I'm going to paint them with that liquid gold leaf just like I used on the stencil and um, I'll do that probably last and then that one's gonna go right there. So I have to attach that one. And then these two on these drawers will be gold. But the, I just made these out of hot glue. And then I attached those two with hot glue. Um, I will probably, um, I'll probably use hot glue on this middle one as well. It depends on, um, I think I'll do it probably last after I seal it. So we're gonna hold, the, hold on to this little guy and wait till very last. Um, so, Next, I'm gonna use a couple of different stencils, or I'm sorry, um, decor transfers in order to create a one-of-a-kind look. Um, and I, the ones that I chose were, well, I chose, okay, three different ones. So for the top drawer, I am going to put um, some little pieces from Imperial Garden. Do you see all those little text bits in the background? There's all that text there which is really small on the package, but see all that text? In real life, it's, it's fairly decent size. Um, I'm gonna fill up that top drawer with some text and make it just very interesting and kind of um, um, give it some, some texture and just something interesting to look at. And then on the very bottom drawer, I'm going to be using some different flowers from um, Rose and Rouge. Um, maybe some of the blue flowers which um, kind of match and then there's also some like blush colored flowers in there too you see the little blush colored flowers I'll use those and there's even some gold little bits of gold throughout this transfer and then sorry I forgot to put my phone on do not disturb oops um, I also grabbed lavender bush because it's also got some blue and pink flowers in it too um, which I think match pretty nicely with the colors that I've chosen. So um, I don't have exactly which pieces I'm going to use chosen yet. I'm just going to kind of open up my transfers and see what, um, what fits where and what really is speaking to me. Um, but I'm going to start out with, um, I'm going to start off with my Imperial Garden. So I was telling you, oh, and my hardware. <laughs> Look at my hardware. Isn't that so pretty? I liquid gold leafed these two, and I'm going to have these big fat keys on, on the piece. It's big fat gaudy keys. I like it. I love gaudy. So anyways, so I'm jumping ahead a little bit. First, we got to grab some scissors and our handy dandy transfer tool. Mine's broken, but I refuse to throw it away. 
I still use it because it's really good for getting in little small areas and small pieces, so all is not lost. If you break your transfer tool, it still works. Um, so I save all of my transfer scraps, and that includes all of these background text bits from um, um, Imperial Garden, because it's my favorite as far as all the little bits of text go. See all those wonderful little letters and scripty things that we can cut out and use? And, and I like this one too, this, sorry, my phone keeps ringing. I forgot to put it on Do Not Disturb. That's why it keeps interrupting. Um, see those really cool little bits of text? So I might use, let's see, we can go ahead and start choosing what we're gonna use. I might use this postcard or part of it. I don't know, it might be a little big, or maybe we can fit it kind of like up here. And then there is also, I see this little pink flower up here with the green leaves. I kind of like that poking out at the top a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out that little pink flower. And um, I, I definitely think I wanna use that. So when I'm chopping up my transfer, um, I just go right straight at it with scissors. I pick which part I want to use and I chop it up. Um, sometimes I feel kind of bad chopping it up. It makes me a little sad, but uh, the end result is worth it. So I get over it and I chop it up anyways. And I always save my scraps, so there's no waste. I end up using um, all the little bits, all the little bits I use. So um, no waste here. So I like that there. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay that down first so that I know, um, oh, so that I know what all areas I have left to fill in with uh, text. So I'm just gonna peel the backing paper off carefully and I'm just gonna kind of position that roughly where I want it and I, I think not quite to the edge is pretty good. Kind of peek in over the edge a little bit just like that. So I'm gonna lay that down and kind of rub it on. Rub it on a little bit um, so it doesn't move on me. And I'm going to grab my, uh, my transfer tool. You can also use the little wooden stick that comes with the transfer. It works just fine. It works perfectly fine, but I'm a little partial to my little transfer tool, so I'm gonna use that. And I'm just gonna give it a good rub all over. And when I'm doing drawers like this that have a rounded lip, I leave just a little on the top and I just kind of push that over a little bit and round it over the corner so I don't just completely have to cut it off. So I make sure that's stuck up there. And then I'm just gonna continue rubbing my transfer all the way down. Sometimes I start in the middle and I work my way out, and sometimes I start at one end and I work my way to the other end. Um, it just kind of depends. But make sure you're holding it in place so it doesn't stick. Um, the transfers will need to be sealed, and you can seal it with um, most water-based sealers, including polyacrylic, um, the top coats from Dixie Bell, um, clear wax. I, I use clear wax quite often because I like the finish of clear wax, but lately I've been using a lot more of the Dixie Belle top coat and satin because satin is my favorite finish and I really like the feel of the, um, of the, the satin top coat. So I'm taking a little, a sharp little knife and I'm just cutting off my excess here. cutting off my excess transfer, and then I'm going to make sure that's laid down by just running my finger over the edge. And I'm gonna to start to peel up slowly. Make sure it's all laid down. If it's not, just put your backing paper back down and give it a good rub again. But this looks like it's sticking pretty good. Okay, there we go. So. That's our first little transfer element. And I'm just gonna give it a good rub with my finger. Sometimes I use the palm of my hand like this for bigger areas. Um, a little firm, 
you want to make sure you're uh, smoothing out any wrinkles, popping any bubbles, or just really getting any air out of there and making sure the edges are pressed down and seal, um, um, adhered really well. Um, if you have air bubbles in your transfer and then you seal it, that's just going to cause some problems later. It will start to peel up and curl and crack and then um, and then everybody wants to blame the top coat when it's most likely just because it wasn't burnished um, properly or well enough. And burnish is just a fancy word for uh, rubbing it in. So we've burnished that well. And now we're gonna move on to our texty text. So look at this pretty chunk of text there. That's, some, that's like the jackpot of texty goodness. Um, I'm going to, let's see, I wonder if we can put that little flower down there. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut out <clears throat> some lines of text that I want to use. I'm thinking that, oh, let's see. That looks like a good little chunk there. So does that. Let's just go ahead and cut out this whole thing. I'm going to cut out this whole section right here and see if that just kind of fits right around my keyhole. So let's see how this fits right here. I could probably just put that right straight on the edge. And probably gonna cut around my keyhole. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this part of the text off. And I can't read it. So no, I'm not really worried about the text making sense because I can't really read what it says anyways. It's some kind of scribbly, scribbly script. So I'm just gonna just place it on. If it was something that I could understand what it was saying, I might be a little more concerned with it making sense, but I can't read any of that. It's just script. Just blah, 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 script. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this guy here next. So we have our next little element ready. So I'm gonna peel off my backing paper all slow like, carefully I mean. And grab my transfer tool. And I'm just going to go ahead and you want to be careful not to touch the back of your transfer because it is adhesive. So if you get all sticky with your uh, with your little uh, booger hooks there, it's not going to stick onto your piece as well, right? All right, so this is where I want it. I'm just going to kind of firmly press it on there so it doesn't move around on me too much. What do you think about that right there? Good. And then I'm going to throw in um, some more lines of text over here to create a little bit more texture and, and layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and rub this on and start in the middle here. Just kind of rub my way out. Nice firm pressure. Some of these take quite a bit of elbow grease to get to stick well and some of them, some of them are a little easier than others to apply. But in general, they need a nice firm, firm uh, hand. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna rub over my text here, make sure that's all on. Sometimes um, the blocks of text like this, all these little pieces can be a little bit more challenging to, to rub on there. But we'll get it. We will get it. All right, so next, all we gotta do is kind of roll our transfer up here over this little lip, and then rub on where it curves over this draw here. Can be a little tricky over these curves. Okay, so we're, I'm gonna start from the bottom here and kind of work my way up. Let's see how it's going. I need to rub those a little bit better. And those. All 
And I would like to put a little bit of um, transfer on the top, the stained portion. I did use a water-based uh, water voodoo gel stain and um, it is dry and you can apply a transfer directly to that. Um, you just want to make sure it's all the way dry, just like you would paint. So we're going to go ahead and pull that up. So far, so good. Boom. There's our last little bit. So I'm going to burnish the transfer with my finger. I'm just going to go around all the edges and go over the whole surface of it and make sure that all those wrinkles are worked out or any bubbles are worked out that you might um, find in your transfer. The more time you take at this point to make sure it's adhered properly, um, the more time you're going to save yourself later when it could possibly fail and you have to redo it. And then you're crying and you don't know what to do. So you go to the Redesign with Prima group and you cry and then we have to help you pinpoint what's wrong, which is fine. But let's just take the extra time right now and burnish it with our fingers so we don't have to do that. So we're just pressing it in really good. Remember that fancy word burnish just means to rub it in. Just means to rub. Okay, cool. So we got that. Now I want to find a little bit of chunks of text to go here, and then we'll move on to our florals down on the um, bottom drawer. So I'm kind of digging earlier, this kind of caught my eye. It's got the ABCs there, kind of caught my eye. I like the size of it, and it kind of fits right in there. So let's see. Let's see if we can just cut that chunk off. I don't know, I kind of like this one too. Let's try, let's start with our ABCs. See how that does us. And we can always add more. So I got my ABCs. And I think that those are going to go right in here just perfectly. Or maybe up here. Or maybe right there. Kind of in between. How about right there? Just overlapping the flower, but not so much that it hides it. So just like we did our other pieces, we're going to rub it on really well. Give it a good rub. And let's see. So you can definitely layer your transfers, which is just one on top of the other. That's totally fine. It sticks just fine. And then you just seal it like you normally would. And voila, layers on layers of transfers. That's how you get a really nice custom look, I believe, in my opinion, is by cutting and chopping and layering. Um, you know, like we all have the same transfers available to us. You know, we all have the same designs available to us. So how, how do we... How do we mix it up so we're not all making the same white dresser with Imperial Garden on the front? Well, it's perfectly fine to do that, but we're, we want to mix it up a little bit so that we can see some different things, some fun things that use imagination. Um, at least that's, that's my philosophy on transfer use. There's nothing wrong with using it right straight out of the tube on the front of a dresser. Um, I kind of like this little word cacao there. I don't know. I might use it here. I think I might use it there. Yeah, I think of, let's do it. Let's, let's do cacao right there and then we'll move right along. Moving right along. I'm just cutting it out. And, oh, I found this little piece of a leaf I almost threw away. But I think we're going to go ahead and use that. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I'm just working on this little dress, uh, little end table that we're preening up. And I just found this little leaf scrap I cut off and I almost threw it away. I'm glad I found it because we're going to use it. What, waste not, want not, right? I mean, let's find a little place for a little leaf. What do you think? You can put it there or there or there. Over there. 
Let's just put it, well, maybe we'll save it for down here. We'll save it for down here, but I'm not gonna throw that away. I'm gonna keep my little leaf. So we cut out the word cacao, cause I like it, it looks pretty. And we're gonna put that right here. I'm gonna overlap the cart post style. I'm gonna over that a little bit. I like to overlap and mix and match and layer. That's kind of the name of the game for me. That's what makes it fun. So I can layer, I can uh, overlap it like that. Let's see, I'm gonna overlap it just like that. Overlap the E. And then my little C is gonna kinda just fall right underneath the drawer and I'll just wrap him around. I could cut it off or I can wrap it around. Careful, careful now. All right, so now that we've got that all rubbed down, I'm just gonna go ahead and peel it up carefully. So I make sure all my transfer is laying down. See how it's sticking on top of the other transfer? Just fine, just fine. So now I get to go over with all the edges and pop any bubbles, wrinkles. Just burnish my transfer, make sure it's down really well. At this point, some people go over it with the finishing pad or or super high grit sandpaper. I don't um, ever, ever feel the need to do that. I, I feel like just being careful and taking your time to burnish it with your finger or the palm of your hand works, works really great. All right, so that is our top draw. Okay, so nothing. I, I like to go back over the whole thing kind of with my palm and just make sure I didn't miss any spots. And what do you think? Look good? That's the top drawer. So now we're gonna throw some flowers on our bottom drawer and or at least we'll start that process and then I'll hop off here and um, you can go on about your Tuesday. But I wanted to show you how to layer transfers, use the large stencil and then um, I got these real pretty little keyhole molds on there too. Um, I gotta paint those. I'm gonna paint those the same gold as I had on my stencil here. And then on the sides, who knows? I may just add some text and flowers to the sides, maybe just a tiny bit. So tying in the front to the sides is just a little. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to our um, Rose and Rouge. Let's go ahead and grab Rose and Rouge. So I've got this blush pink and the blues, this kind of um, vintage duck egg blue happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, show you my Rose and Rouge, which happens to have some of those same colors in it. So this transfer has some really great colors. See that little kind of periwinkle blue? Do you think that will go well? I think it will. And then there's some kind of blush tones in there. Let's see if I can find one of the more blush flowers. See that guy right there? That's a good color for a piece here. It's got some some blush, and then there's another little blue guy. So I'm gonna, um, oh, let's see, where do I wanna start? I think I'm gonna start with, uh, nah, 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 nah. let's see. So I'm gonna kinda hold it up and see where I think, so where I think it would make sense to really start placing flowers. So I can kinda cut along here, and since this is already has that you know hard line there, I can just kind of make that the bottom right there. So I, I can get all those blush flowers on in one piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut those out pretty carefully. And like I said earlier, this also has some gold running through it too, which matches our stenciling. Eh? <clears throat> Thanks, Tracy. Yes, I, um, I love the combination of the green and pink, and then I kind of was like, what if we had a little bit of blue in there too? A little unexpected, so I like it. I like a good unexpected color combo. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. We want to come up here around this leaf. Uh, and up here. Okay, so this is our little section. Remember I just showed you that little section I wanted to cut out? 
Actually, I think I'm gonna get rid of this little brown leaf. I'm not digging that color on that brown leaf. We'll replace it maybe with our leaf we rescued from the trash. Okay, so let's start here and throw that bad boy on right there. And kind of line it up where you want it. Make sure you uh, got it where you want it before you totally commit and press it down. So I'm going to go ahead and commit to right here. And so I'm going to give it a good rub. Get it on there with the palm of my hand. All right, so now it's pretty much not going anywhere. Now we can just burnish it all over with our stick. And I like to use my thumb or, or whatever other finger I have free to hold my backing paper in place. Because sometimes if your hand slips, then the paper slips and you ruin your transfer, it'll tear it. Um, and that's no, no good. We want to try to save the transfers, not ruin them. So I like to hold it in place while I'm burnishing it. Here, go up around here. So, I also, I think I showed you, I also grabbed lavender bush, which is another transfer with some kind of um, periwinkle and, and blush colored flowers. So um, after I apply this, I'm gonna grab that transfer. I'll show that to you and we'll pick some flowers out from there that we can coordinate with this one. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a go here. Oh, that stuck really well. Woo, look at that. What do you think? Pink flowers with our pink up here. It's kind of coordinating pretty good, right? Um, yes, the transfers are amazing. I love them. I don't know what I did without them. Like Life before transfers was dull. Dull, I tell ya. And just in case anybody watching isn't familiar with application of transfers, I, I didn't mention this, um, and I shouldn't just assume everyone knows, but I'm, a, I'm applying this directly onto my dried paint. And in this case, it's dried overnight, but um, honestly, most of the time, I just wait till it's dry to the touch, so I give it a, an hour or two, and um, then I apply my transfers, and I have had no issues as of, you know, right now with the adhesion of my transfer. So, um, knock on wood, continue, hopefully we'll continue to have good luck with them. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, grab our lavender bush transfer so I can go ahead and show you this, maybe apply a couple and then I'll hop off. Our lavender bush has got, so it comes in two parts. It's got this one part that's this big long, um, it's like a quote and it's got some flowers thrown throughout it. See that? You could just slap that on the front of an armoire or something if you wanted. Um, and then it's got this other section which I've chopped up already that comes with some text. Maybe we'll use that on the top. Well, it won't show on the top. But see how it's got some little flowers you can kind of chop out and cut out and, and use as you please. So I happen to have this little piece in my hand. I'm wondering if we can just kind of use that somewhere. I don't think I want to use the white flower, so I'm probably going to cut the white flower out and possibly just add this in somewhere. So let's see, maybe, um, I wonder if I could kind of come like that a little bit. I do want to cut, I'm gonna cut out the purple and the white flowers, because I don't want to use purple and white. I'm, I'm kind of trying to stick to my blush and, um, blue theme, even though I'm, I'm normally all about equal opportunity coloring of my 
work. I this time I, I really want to stick with just the periwinkle and the pink. But I am going to cut out these little uh, leaves here because I love I love to sprinkle greenery all over. So I usually place my flowers and then I cut out some leaves or other types of greenery and just sprinkle those in because it makes a huge difference having the greenery there in my opinion. I think we could probably just throw this little guy right here and then maybe another little small flower trailing off here and then we can build up some more flowers in this corner and give it kind of like a, a cascading um, effect. Yeah, sounds like a great idea, I think. So we're going to do it. We're going to do it. So I'm just going to overlap this one a little bit, place it right over the transfer I just put down. Don't need to seal it or in between or anything like that. You just plop it right on there and start to give it a rub. I think I'm going to place one more flower. I want to pull maybe some periwinkle out of Rose and Rouge or maybe, I don't know, is there a periwinkle in here? Um, maybe we can pull out this guy here and add that in and then, um, and then I'll jump off of here. Oh, look at this guy. That guy would be perfect kind of up here, don't you think? Maybe, maybe possibly. We'll see here in just a second. We will find out, boys and girls. We will find out. All right, so I'm just going to bring this underneath, curl it under a little bit. Boom, boom, boom. Burnish it on. Okay, and then I'm just going to start to kind of peel up from the bottom. Easy peasy. Whoop. Look at that. Can't even tell it's two different transfers, can you? Boom. Just like that, they coordinate, right? They coordinate just fine. And I like to pop the transfer over the holes for my hardware. It's just awesome. It's a great feeling. I love popping the hole. Popping the, whatever you call it. Popping the transfer. Crazy satisfying. All right, one more and then um, I will get out of your hair. Which one did I say? Well, let's try, let's try this big bad boy right here. So I'm gonna grab this little periwinkle guy or big periwinkle guy. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and grab these little leaves too. We could probably use those. I'm gonna cut off this little maroon flower because he doesn't really quite fit as well. I got a little pop of maroon here. So uh, I don't know, maybe I'll save it and see if it fits somewhere else. And we still got this guy here too. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and put this little leaf. I'm gonna go ahead and pop him right here, I think. Because I don't like to waste. We're gonna use that leaf. So now let's pick, pick a spot for our little periwinkle man. Oh, that looks like a great spot right there. Right there. And then as I said earlier, we're cascading down. What do you think? Is that a winner? I think that is a winner, winner chicken dinner, that spot right there. Um, yes, layering the transfers is my life. It's my life. I don't even remember life before layering transfers. I, I just don't even remember it. It's a race for my memory. All right, so we're just gonna, I don't wanna completely cover up what we've got going on, but I want him to um, definitely make a statement. So we're just gonna like, uh, oh, let's pop him down right there. Right there looks great to me. Rub him on with my palm. And now with my transfer tool, I'll just, give him an official 
official uh, burnishing here. Can be a little tricky to um, rub on over these curves, so you just got to be careful. And you can do it. You can do it. All right. And if you are needing to find any redesign with Prima products. You can find a list of retailers in the store locator on the website, redesignwithprima.com, and um, it'll give you a list of your uh, lo of uh, retailers separated out by state, so you can find the one closest to you. If there's not one close to you, or um, you don't prefer to support your local small business, you can, uh, most of the retailers, or I just scratched my paint there, most of the retailers have Etsy shops, so you can always hop on Etsy, and find you a transfer or whatever it is you're needing um, on Etsy. All right, so we're gonna peel away our backing paper. And easy peasy, just like that. I just scratched my paint with my transfer tool. So you wanna be careful not to do that. I'm gonna just touch that up real quick. Um, but other than that, my plan is to just add a few more florals in this corner here. There's a possibility I may add some in a um, opposing corner on the um, stained part. Just a peek, not anything too crazy. And then I'm going to gild my keyholes, apply this keyhole, and then do some treatment on the sides. And then um, I'm gonna seal this whole thing in um, top coat our clear coat satin from Dixie Bell. Like I said earlier, you can use clear wax, um, polyacrylic, um, several of the water-based sealers that um, I can't recall off the top of my head right now will work just fine. So that is how you layer and large stencil. Uh, if you have any questions, just shoot them in the comments. I'd be more than happy to go back and answer them for you if someone else hasn't already answered them for you. Um, so thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit on the Redesign with Prima page. You all have a wonderful week, and I'll talk at you later. Bye.